just a little bit in case it falls. <clears throat> Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean it is an over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, we are on the side of the road here. We are in Augusta, Georgia, heading from New York to uh, the Sunshine State, and it is a spectacularly gorgeous Friday, November 12th, 2021, and the little dog and I are on our way to go visit the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, long live the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, but before we head off to our pilgrimage to Mecca, do what I try to do every Friday. I don't think I did this last Friday. I was on the road, so this is for the first time in two weeks. We're going to uh, dive into our ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to mongabay.com to check in with uh, Rhett Br Butler and the boys and girls. I am thrilled to see that Rhett uh, ditched that new format and went back to his old format. Uh, thank you, Rhett, for uh, recognizing the error of your ways and heading back. So uh, now that we're back to normal, uh, <clears throat> we're going to start out in Brazil. Wow. Th this, <laughs> th this one gets right to it. Top Brazil gold exporter leaves a trail of criminal probes and illegal mines. Do you think so? This is Brazilian gold exporter BP Trading. Yes. Uh, most of their illegal mines are concentrated in indigenous territories where they deforest the land, pollute the rivers, and inflict violence on indigenous communities. Uh, the company saw strong growth in recent years with revenues of $256 million in 2019, more than double what it made in 2018. Yeah. Okay, from, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not going to talk about carbon deals. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Rhett Butler is a big fan of these carbon trading uh, deals. I know that Rhett's been pushing this. Uh, I admit, guys, I, I am not as educated as I need to be about these carbon offsetting programs to save the planet. I, I just smell a rat with them. All of these various carbon trading schemes. It sounds to me like it's just one more way that these planet eaters are given a license to kill and pulling the wool over these little greenies' eyes. But who, you know, Rhett Butler knows a lot more about it. He is a big fan of them. Uh, I am going to uh, <clears throat> respectfully agree to disagree. I consider carbon trading schemes to be greenwashing hopium. Uh, okay. We have a report from COP26 here. This is Manga Bay's report, one of several, I'm sure. <clears throat> from COP26, surging wood pellet industry threatens climate, uh, say experts at COP26. So I am in, <coughs> heading into the, the down here in. Uh, Southeast Georgia is a, this is a major uh, wood pellet uh, industry hotbed. I might get some video of the wood pellet industry. <clears throat> With the UN climate summit going on, Earth is on track to warm by 2.7 C or 
or close to five degrees Fahrenheit by 2100. A catastrophic forecast based on projected carbon emissions. Yes. However, analysts say those projections do not include major emissions currently escaping from biomass burning power plants. Biomass, that's otherwise known as trees. Uh, a carbon accounting loophole in, cl in global climate change policy classifies burning woody biomass for energy as carbon neutral and is accepted by accepted by the UN and many of the world's nations but scientists have proven otherwise as the forest industry gets massive subsidies to produce millions of tons of wood pellets annually those subsidies are fueling rapid growth of the biomass industry as forests are, well, obliterated right here in the U.S., right around here, Canada, Eastern Europe, Russia, Vietnam, and Malaysia. The EU and UK are the world's largest biomass energy market. Uh, and the market is also r rapidly expanding in Japan and South Korea. The biomass boom is just beginning. Yes, scientists and activists say that to avoid disastrous global warming impacts, you know, from the booming biomass industry, uh, biomass subsidies must end, which will make the industry unprofitable. Yes, but the topic is not even on the COP26 agenda and action on the biomass burning issue anytime soon remains unlikely. Do you think so? All right, that's pretty much anywhere on the planet, you know, including Augusta, Georgia. So we're going to go from that. We're going to go over to the Philippines. Wow. <clears throat> Where have we heard this story? Struggle endures for Philippine community pitted against gold miner. <coughs> you will not believe this, but an Australian-Canadian... An Australian Canadian mining firm called Oceana Gold was recently granted a renewal of its permit to mine gold and copper. Yes, the mine has faced years of opposition from area residents, mostly indigenous people, who say it has scarred their land and threatens the water systems they depend on. Yes, um, and uh, you will not believe it, <clears throat> restrictions put in place to curb the spread of corona panic have hampered the ability of protesters to organize to fight the mine. Okay, uh, we're going to skip over the hopium. <clears throat> I'm just not going to even go into the hopium. All right, you will not, you will not, uh, believe what is, I love the name Buffalo frenzy. I've never, I, this is the, we have a new term for the collapse of a planet. Buffalo frenzy. I love that name, buffalo frenzy. Just when you thought you would heard it all, we now have a buffalo frenzy unfolding in the Amazon rainforest. Indigenous lands under siege as buffalo frenzy grips the Amazon. 
deforestation is rising in Altazes, a municipality in the Brazilian state of Amazonas. Uh, indigenous leaders say the land clearing is now encroaching on the 18 indigenous reserves scattered across the area. Most of the raised lots are being turned into grazing pastures for herds of domestic water buffaloes which thrive in floodplains. Yes. Uh, indigenous community members say that in addition to clearing forests for the pasture, buffalo farming is polluting their water sources and roaming buffaloes are invading communities' subsistence farms. The buffalo frenzy. Good God, just when you thought you had heard it all. Uh... All right, we have some more hopium uh, that we're not going to talk about. Okay, so you know uh, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. So this week's, if you go over to Manga Bay's YouTube channel, you can see this, uh, this mine over there in the Philippines. Anybody unclear of what planet eating looks like? Good God, their featured video reopened Philippine mine threatens indigenous people. And uh, you can take this video of this mine in the Philippines and, you know, multiply that times about 10,000. And as you're watching that video, keep in mind, keep in mind that uh, they're saying for the energy transition, you know, to save the world from fossil fuels, that mining between now and 2050 is going to increase, I have heard the estimates uh, as, you know, from four to 500 percent. So you take this video and, uh, and multiply it five times if you want to see what the clean green renewable energy transition is going to look like. My guess is a, is a lot of, if that's a, particularly if it's a copper mine, uh, a lot of uh, that is going into the, the uh, energy transition as the miners uh, cheering on the energy transition. Okay, let's go look at plastic pollution. Despite deals, plans, and bans, the Mediterranean is still awash in plastic. The Mediterranean Sea is considered to be one of the world's most polluted bodies of water due to waste disposal problems in many countries bordering the sea as well as the intensity of marine activity in the region. Uh, there are several existing policies and treaties in place aimed at regulating plastics and reducing plastic pollution in the Mediterranean, but experts say more international cooperation is needed to tackle the problem. Do you think so? Uh, Okay, again, this gets back to the difference between illegal and legal. Uh, this is talking about the, in the difference between illegal palm oil uh, and legal palm oil uh, plantations. There, a, a, a palm oil plantation is a palm oil plantation. But uh, if you pay attention to those words, one in five uh, acres of oil palm in Indonesia is illegal. So 20% of the oil palm plantations in Indonesia uh, are, are, are just there completely illegally, I guess. One-fifth of oil palm plantations in Indonesia, the world's biggest producer of palm oil, 
are operating illegally inside forest areas that are off limits to commercial agricultural activity a new report from Greenpeace shows half of these plantations are operated by corporations planet eaters and the other half by small holders called planet nibblers indicating that nearly one-third of registered palm oil companies in Indonesia have illegal plantations. These illegal plantations occupy protected areas such as national parks and UNESCO World Heritage Sites and overlap with the habitat of threatened wildlife like orangutans and tigers. Yes, many of the companies identified in the Greenpeace report are members of so-called sustainability certification schemes like the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil. Yes, pointing to a failure by these initiatives to address unsustainable practices. Once again, we've been saying it for uh, 12 years now, once again, guys, read my lips. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. Okay? The term sustainable palm oil is an oxymoron with the emphasis on moron. Anybody believing on any level that palm oil, legal or illegal, is sustainable is a moron. Take your little, uh, your little uh, sustainability certificates, throw them out the window. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. Alright, now that we've cleared that up for the 10,000th time, alright, we have, I love this, indigenous tribes now arming themselves with drones to track deforestation in, in Brazil. Yes, you will not believe that the rate of deforestation has increased in recent years in the Brazilian state of Acre, which is now in the top five for deforestation risk. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, anyway, we are now training Amazon Indians to monitor their own territories with drones. <laughs> there you go. Alright, if you're looking to buy a hornbill, one of these endangered birds with these giant bills, uh, Manga Bay is recommending you go on Facebook. Facebook in Indonesia, if you want to buy a hornbill, you can find them for sale on Facebook and many other in day. As long as you're shopping for hornbills, you can probably buy pangolin scales while you're at it. Um, Facebook. I don't think, is it called Facebook anymore? Anyway. Uh, Alright guys, again, I only have time for a few of these. And when my buddy is ready to go to the Georgia Guidestones, I'm going to have to wrap this up. Uh, what is going on with this Sumatran tiger in Indonesia? Starving and injured Sumatran tiger dies. There you go. A severely injured and emaciated Sumatran tiger has died in captivity after being captured from the wild. 
this. Uh, conservation authorities speculate an outbreak of African swine fever that has affected the area's population of wild boars likely forces tigers to roam farther from the forest and into human settlements. Fewer than 400 Sumatran tigers now remain in the wild with the big cat's population plunging in line with widespread destruction of its forest habitat primarily due to logging and expanding oil palm and pulpwood plantations. The thanks so. Uh, here is another report. It sounds like pretty much a repeat of the last article from COP26. European Union is committed to forest biomass burning to cut fossil fuel use. We've already been through this, but uh, the, the problem is that uh, the biomass ultimately, besides, you know, just obliterating all of the, this habitat, uh, often, you know, the direct obliteration of, of all of this habitat for our fellow earthlings, uh, when you, you know, when you're honest about it, it, it it's every bit as bad, if not worse, uh, with carbon emissions. But uh, anyway, all right. What do indigenous leaders, yes, indigenous leaders share concerns and uh, hopes towards pledges made at COP26? Oh, yes, uh, I'm sure those planet eaters at COP26 gave a lot of reason for hope to indigenous tribes. Oh, Jesus. Uh, you know, good Lord, guys. I am about one-third of the way through. Uh, all right, back to COP26. COP26 cop-out. Indonesia's clean energy pledge keeps coal front and center. I think I've already reported on this. This is Manga Bay covering this story. In an effort to phase out its coal-fired power plants by the 2040s as part of a pledge signed at COP26, Indonesia plans to start with decommissioning one quarter of its coal capacity in 10 years. Yes. Uh, environmentalists have noted that Indonesia's commitment is so riddled with loopholes that it makes the effort essentially useless. In particular, the fact that Indonesia is on track to add more coal capacity by 2030 than it plans to retire. Yes, the government of President Joko Widodo, yes, is also betting big on giving the coal industry a second life through coal gasification, a process that yields a cleaning burning, cleaner burning fuel, but which in producing it is even more carbon intensive than just burning the coal itself. Yes, uh, and don't forget, we're all, they're also burning wood pellets alongside coal. Uh, okay, we have a, uh, an interview titled A Leap of Faith, an interview with Robin Radcliffe on the feasibility of airlifting rhinos upside down. 
translocation of animals is not new. What is new is hanging them upside down by their feet under a helicopter. Yes. Uh, there you go. Ah, only this is not the onion. This is Manga Bay. Uh, what is going on with loggers in Madagascar? Take a wild guess what is going on with loggers uh, in Madagascar. Uh, good Lord. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's go back to look at this story. I think we've already talked about they, they all run together. Let's go over there to Papua New Guinea. UNESCO reiterates road projects dangers to Papua Park as Indonesia doubles down. UNESCO has renewed its calls for Indonesia to close the Trans-Papua Road that runs through a national park, citing environmental concerns. Yes, uh, the call comes after the environment minister said UNESCO's request is not realistic <coughs> and thus the road cannot be closed. Yes. Uh, activists in the region say the road is meant to serve extractive industries in the national park, including logging and mining. Gee, where have we heard stories of protected areas? being the newest hotbeds for logging, mining, poaching, palm oil, uh, you know, national parks. You know, it's, it's open. Look at all that land. Let's go over there to Jordan. Now, we don't hear much from Jordan. Wow. <clears throat> Sounds kind of like everywhere else on the planet. Planned copper mine raises fears for biodiversity hotspot in Jordan. The Jordanian government plans to carve out, I love that, to carve out almost a third of the now protected Dana Biosphere Reserve to allow copper mining in the biodiverse area. Yes, with more than 800 different plants and 215 bird species, Donna or Dana is home to about one third of the country's flora, almost one half of the country's mammals, and half of all of its bird species. Local communities and conservationists have expressed alarm over the plan, warning of irreversible environmental destruction, water and air pollution, and loss of habitat for rare wildlife. And they talk about, you know, these little, these 2,000 year old little tiny little copper mines are still posing a toxic threat in the area. 2,000 years later. <clears throat> Did you realize that for forest communities a loss of nature means loss of culture? Never would have thought of that. Uh, here is a commentary about the absolute failure of of conserving tigers. Uh, let's see. 
Anyway, Tigers, we all know where they're going. Uh, all right, well, <clears throat> no, that's for the hopium. Uh, this is their report on COP26 looking at methane. Uh, Yes, <clears throat> we're going to have COP26 anyway. Uh, good Lord, guys. Uh, all right, let's look at more of these green labels, these sustainability labels. This is a commentary by some guy named Sam Lawson relying on green labels to address our thirst for the products of deforestation would be a disaster. Yes, fresh promises on forest at COP26 will be meaningless unless they are coupled with real action. Yes, if you did not realize this, deforestation is driven by overseas demand for agri-commodities like palm oil, soy, and beef. They will not be stopped until demand for them is stopped. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> None of these measures, the, these BS uh, greenwashing measures will matter if they do not address a wider problem, the flawed independent certification schemes it looks likely to end up relying on, whether they are given a former green lane or not. Yes. I, I, again, guys, the, these BS greenwashing sustainability pledges, they mean nothing. Anybody uh, relying on any of these bullshit labels, uh, thinking you're, th you're doing one thing uh, to saving this planet by shopping the, 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 the damn a uh, little bullshit uh, save the planet labels. Y y you know, come on, people, get real. Anyway. Yeah, good luck on this. Scientists urge Joe Biden to remove logging, fossil fuels, and biomass from budget bills. Uh-huh. More than 100 scientists have issued an open letter urging U.S. President Joe Biden <coughs> and members of Congress to remove provisions promoting logging, forest biomass, and fossil fuels from their infrastructure and reconciliation known as Build Back Better bills. Yes. We've already, I've already covered this about how, uh, what this build back better, I mean, it is an open pass to planet eaters. I hadn't even thought about loggers. Uh, I, I didn't even know about that one. Uh, you, you know, every fossil fuel executive uh, in this country is, is dancing uh, on air this week, the miners, the loggers, this Build Back Better program is a direct assault uh, on this country and this planet. Now, it's not quite to the level of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, but it certainly is, uh, you, you know, is the kid sister. It, it is the Save the Planet Joe Biden uh, leaving his environmental legacy. The guy is a planet eater. Jesus. 
Uh, okay, we already talked about this one two weeks ago, about how the peace deal in Colombia sparked a new war on forests. We already talked about how war saving the planet. Uh, more talk about Indonesia at COP26. Uh, good Lord. How about Chile? Green light for mining project raises red flags <coughs> for Chile Penguin Reserve. A mining and port project could threaten penguins and other marine species has been approved near Chile's Humboldt Islands. Uh, the approval has sparked widespread criticism from the scientific community, yes, who say it ignores conservation science and prioritizes business interest. From Chile to Peru, Yes, in Peru's Amazon, deforestation and crime sweep through indigenous communities. Right here in the Mother of God, the Madre de Dios, that's where I wrote my book in 2009. If you want to go find my book, it's called Peruvian Plunge. I uh, can't remember the name of the author of Peruvian Plunge, but that this it is my you know, hands-on first-person report uh, what it looked like down there 12 years ago. Uh, an analysis of deforestation, illegal mining, and illicit coca crops in five regions shows that 1,247 indigenous communities have been affected. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh God, asking the question, what countries are leaders in reducing deforestation and which are not? I will let you uh, answer that question for yourself. Uh, <clears throat> All right, from buffalo to bison. Yes. Did you realize November 6th, right, went right past my radar, was National Bison Day? Yep, yep, yep. Uh... Anyway, guys, uh, this real quick, here is an illegal logging network thriving inside of Mexico City's urban sprawl. Here is some river in Borneo, you know, looking at those dolphins uh, getting ready to go the way of the dodo bird. Here is Indonesia's flip-flop on its zero deforestation pledge. Uh, here is outgunned by militants, rangers fear for chimpanzees in southwest Mali. Uh, here is behind grand declarations at COP26, a long track record of failure. Here is the shark fishing trade in Indonesia. Uh, here is, uh, good. guys, anyway, my buddy is telling me, wrap it up. I could go on and on with this, uh, good Lord, but I think we've had enough doom and gloom for the day I understand I am talking to myself. So I'm going to wrap this up and uh, head out to the Georgia Guidestones on this gorgeous day. And I highly suggest you get out there on this beautiful day and uh, check out the Georgia Guidestones while you still can. My God.